my, my questions are going to be a little, a little bit more open ended, but what would you say, like, um, like let's say you're, you're on you know, a, a really long run and you have reached that point where your body is just is quitting? What, what is it that keeps you going? You know, what is it that you find within yourself? Like, if you could define that, that's, that's a great question. You know, the, the thing I've learned is you can get to your, your absolute lowest point. So you have to trust that as long as you're nutritionally sound and you're taking care of your body, like, you know, nutritionally speaking, uh, you, you can push through any, you know, any valley that you're, that you're in. So I, I've had, there's been many times on runs where I've thought to myself, like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm done. You know, I, I, I can't do this. And you just put one foot in front of the other, in front of the other, in front of the other. And the next thing you know, you can just ride through the valley. So, um, so I found that you can recover. I found that um, that you can push your body and mind to do things that you never thought in, in a million years you would ever be doing. And you know, two weeks before the race, my knee began to hurt excruciatingly bad, to the point I could hardly walk up the stairs. Fearing a tear and the possibility that this month-long project was about to go down the drain, I was forced to keep it to myself. Thus, in doing so, I had to look pain straight in the eye. Was this truly a legitimate injury, or was it a manifestation of fear? Could the mind really be so powerful that it could create pain like this? How? How could my mind betray me like this? Why would my mind betray me like this? I think it's more of in my DNA that I don't stop something until I'm done. I just don't quit. I've only had one DNF in an ultra in all the years I've run, and that was more medical than anything. Um, and I'm competitive. And if 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 there aren't human beings to compete with, then I'm going to compete with myself, you know, my own, my own times and my own segments. I'm curious, um, and I know that the pain is temporary, and it's up to me how much I take on. Yeah, I always think that if there's anybody that's going to give in easy, they're not in this sport. <laughs> that's just part of the dynamic. If you're going to if you're going to take the first uh, exit door, yeah, you shouldn't be in this sport because there's there's a lot of opportunity to do that no matter what event you're in. You know, I kind of look at it as as a I always describe it as a three-legged stool, and you have to have all of them figured out. At the, if you have them all figured out, man, it's total harmony and you're cranking. And there's there's aren't very many times where it's really like that where you have this thing just totally tuned, but. You know, you've got the physical part. That's really the easiest one to understand. You go out there and train, and it's hard to do, and you're out there a long time, but you, you've done the miles. You know how hard it's going to be. You know where the hills are, how steep they are, you know, how much farther you got to run. That, that's probably the easiest one to figure out. There's probably been a million books for it. Then the second one is kind of the metabolic one. When you're going for that long, right, you got to figure out how to eat, how to drink, how to, you know, keep your body going so it's really not ever compromised from a nutritional or metabolic standpoint. Because once you go down that slide, boy, that can really be hard to get back from because you may not be able to continue to um, crank without, you know, having to stop and, and, and restart, you know, which means sitting down, resting, eating, drinking, you know, get your body to re, re, re kind of start again. And then the third one is the, is the mental one. I mean, both of those, all three of them are working against and, and with each other to try to get you to the finish line. There's times where you're like, man, my legs just aren't there, but you know, your stomach's fine. You got the spirits, but you're like, man, I just don't, you know, feel like I've got the legs. And then other times you're like, man, I'm running, but I think I'm about ready to get sick. Or, you know, you get into these low spots mentally, like you're on some hill and you think, geez, I, sh I should be at the top. I've been climbing for 40 minutes. And if you don't know how much farther it is, it can really just crush you mentally. You see a lot of people on these longer, steeper climbs in like Western states, and they're just sitting on the side of the trail two thirds of the way to the top. And they're like, you know, you go by them and they're like, hey, am I almost there? And you're like, uh, no. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm about two weeks out from the race. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot left to do training-wise and getting in mileage-wise. It's, it's now totally just about piecing together my body and getting my mind right for this event. And, you know, it's really important to note that I was 
at this time more scared to do this than anything I've ever done. And truly, truly deep down, everything was telling me, quit, don't do this, call it off. You know, call everyone, tell them that you're injured and you can't do it. And I went against that, which was, you know, even more scary than, you know, calling people up and, and saying, I can't do it, I hurt myself. Um, and, and so when I made that commitment, I knew that I had to, you know, even even if this stuff was like hocus pocus mag magic or whatever, I, I needed to, to have reassurance in my mind that my knee was okay. So I always have some, some mental battles in that 15 mile zone for some reason. Um, for me, what I found to be the best for that is the overwhelming thought process of what do you need to do right now to feel better? and to start kind of just at my toes and work my way up as far as, you know, how do your feet feel? What do you need to do to fix your feet? You know, are your blisters bugging you? Or how do your knees feel? And just kind of work your way up. And I know enough about kind of just how my body functions at this point to know what it needs. And it, you know, it might need a salt tab. It might need some extra calories. It might need some extra electrolyte. And trust what you know works for you and give it a little bit of time, you know, take, if you need to double up on something, double up and give it 10 minutes to see if you feel better. But I think the overwhelming thought process is don't, don't give up. Just take it back a notch if you need to and just chip away. Just chip away at it. Get your head down. Get to work. Don't be distracted by, you know, runners that are flying past you feeling good. Just get your head down and get to work and trust the process. You know, it's gonna, you're going to feel better. But your right knee? Yeah, so it's my right knee kind okay. of like on the, like this area. Okay. It's like, and it, you just showed a blind guy this oh. area. How do you, what are your <laughs> I think for me, I necessarily don't like it when I'm getting sick or if I'm getting lightheaded or um, my muscles are too tight. I don't, I don't want that to happen, but I understand that at any point I'm going to have an opportunity to grow. So I think when you do go out in the heat, you know, with uh, Joy talked about going on the heat when no one else is out there, you know, um, it's a mental thing to know that, you know, yes, it's 100 plus degrees out there. I probably shouldn't be out there, but there's a big difference between not wanting to do something and not being able to do something. So I think really when it comes to the different elements, um, yeah, of course you wake up 4.30 a.m., it's pouring rain, it's cold outside. There's a million reasons not to go out there. But once you do, every, all of a sudden everything in your life, you just think about things a little bit differently, you know? It's like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go out and run, I'm not gonna go out and run, you know, 30 miles in the colds and uh, not let that stop me. And then someone say something to me at work and have my feelings get hurt and let that ruin my day. It's just not, it kind of, when you push yourself mentally and physically out on the trails, it kind of carries on over to the rest of my life. So I use trail running as a way to just empower me for my life, make me a better husband, you know, make me a better father because um, I'm pushing the elements on what I can really handle. So um, the, the things that were maybe difficult before aren't as difficult um, after some of the experiences you put yourself through, you know? You know, just, hey, just do five more and then wait till the sun comes up and then you'll feel better and then you'll hear your, hit your crew and then they'll give you a milkshake or an ice cream sandwich or, you know, something that really tastes good. Now you got another pacer to tell you funny stories and before you know it, you're, you're kind of working towards the part where you get kind of into the gravitational pull of the finish line. You know, and then, then that takes over, right? When you're out there far away and you can't really sense you're, you're closing in on it, then it's a little trickier, right? But there's, I think there's certainly a dynamic where you go, okay, I don't have this in the bag, but I know I can make it to the end.